Grant tanks are supporting the New Zealanders in the Western Desert. Fast, well-armed and well-armoured, these American tanks are fine weapons for the attack in open country. Tank fighting is a job for small groups of men used to going away and working on their own and making their own quick decisions. That is why men on our side are apt to do the job notably better than men from the Nazi slave state. In Wellington City, the second Liberty Loan is launched with a parade. Spectators climb the scaffolding on buildings still in splints from recent successive earthquakes. On comes the parade, machines that all had to be paid for somehow, and men who have left farm and factory to fight. Men still in productive jobs are mostly making goods like these universal carriers. Some people don't like parades. They'd rather be out in the desert chasing Jerry with a bayonet. in the forces or working for the forces, and so now are the women. Where the workers are, the money must go too, and so the present loan aims to transfer 10 million pounds to war purposes. Later, when all are back in their jobs again, and there are businesses to found, houses to build, and plenty to spend money on, the money will go back to the subscribers with interest. Industries such as the building of aeroplanes and the growing and processing of linen flax have been brought into being by the war. Shipbuilding is one of the Dominion's oldest industries. The war has revived it. This is a new steel minesweeper built at the Evans Bay Patent Slip, famous for ship repairs. Of taller design, she can be readily adapted for fishing when peacetime comes. The launching ceremony is performed by Mrs. Fraser and His Majesty's New Zealand ship, Awatere, begins to move. As she enters the water, the flag breaks at the masthead. And so, a hundred years after the launching of her first ship, Port Nicholson receives her first naval vessel. Well built New Zealand. Thank you.